Hey all, it's Josh with Battle Bond here. So I'm just coming at you guys today with an overview of an old world tournament that I attended here in Calgary on May 26th. So the tournament was called the Alberta Classic and it's actually just a, a set of tournaments that happen with a bunch of different kinds of game systems and it just so happened that Old World was running one of these days and I decided to attend. So as you guys can see with the picture that's up on the screen, I decided to take my Lizardmen. Yeah, sorry for this picture for whatever reason I just forgot to <laughs> take pictures of my army <laughs> during the actual tournament. So these ones were taken after, but I just wanted to do like uh, an overall kind of list breakdown and what my thoughts were with regards to why I chose what I did. So let's go through that and go into my list and kind of cover everything in depth. So the list is 2000 points and we will start things off with the characters. So you guys can see here, we've got the old blood on the Carnosaur and the the Slan Mage Priest. So for the Slan, I decided to opt for him as my general and give him the battle standard bearer. For potential rerolls um, for magic items, he ended up with the Ruby Ring of Ruin and Lore Familiar. And I decided to upgrade him with Higher State of Mind for his discipline and the lore I chose was battle magic so the thought behind this guy was that first and foremost I wanted to be able to pick my spells so that's why the lore familiar was with him the higher state of mind is there because I don't have any temple guard in my list and uh, I was a little worried about him being shot down by like a cannonball or just bows or whatever because obviously his save isn't very good so in that case he can only be targeted by magic so that really limits options and if it's going to be let's say a magic missile from another wizard i will at least be in range to dispel it so it should give me good odds of keeping him alive and then finally the ruby ring because i figured since i was going to be taking battle magic for this tournament what's better than one fireball two fireballs to get rid of any kind of like pesky units and stuff that might show up so yeah that was my thinking behind the slan and then the source old blood so for him he had obviously he's on a carnosaur and i bought him just a regular shield otherwise his gear is just stock and then for magic items i gave him the talisman of protection and the blade of revered sunky the reason for this is i wanted to him to have a decent save so he has a four up five up which is okay and i really wanted him to be able to punch hard because he like he's essentially supposed to be a, a dragon without wings and having played in the previous doubles tournament the dragons were pretty prevalent and obviously i wasn't sure what was going to show up so i wanted him to be able to kind of tackle anything um, big or nasty character wise and for those of you guys who don't know or don't have the uh, information with regards to that blade handy his magic weapon is strength plus one so that puts him up to strength six which is wounding most things on fours at most and the blade has no armor or ward saves built into it and so that's why i figured he'd be good for taking on things like you know if the the unkillable chaos lord on dragon with the nurgle chaos lord on dragon showed up anything like that i could kind of missile him towards that particular model and i would have a good chance of actually just wiping him out because the the carnosaur also it has a rule with its uh slashing talons where first of all they're armor piercing three which is huge but then they also do multiple wounds d3 on anything that is a monster 
which makes them makes him even better at going after big targets. So that's what I was thinking for these two guys. Moving on to the core, we will start with the big brick of Saurus. So it's 24 Saurus warriors. And because Saurus are mandatory to take, I figured why not just take a big unit of them? And that's what I'll, I'll use to absorb the big charges. Since they're they're all base two attacks and they're strength four, toughness four, and they are heavy armor with shield so that gives them a four up armor save so it makes them really tanky as far as just basic infantry goes and they're they're also heavy infantry so you know things like units hitting them on the flank have to be at least unit strength 10 to disrupt them so yeah i figured let's just kit them out since they're mandatory anyways so that they got spears and i also upgraded them with shield wall uh just in case i needed that once per game give ground instead of fall back in good order and moving on we have two units of 10 skink skirmishers i gave them their kit out exactly the same both both units are 10 strong they have blowpipes and they have scouts and i figured i would send these guys after like war machines or if my opponent kind of misdeployed their characters something like that i could send them after lone characters and with the weight of poison attacks hopefully deal with like stray wizards or something like that and then finally for rounding out my core units i had another unit of 17 skink skirmishers with javelins so they just didn't have any upgrades or anything at all i should mention too that for the source warriors they had a champion and a standard in that unit and then moving on to special so my only special was the 10 chameleon skinks so they're the the guys that look like they're coming out of the water there and they are basically exactly the same as the skink skirmishers except for they have uh, scout and stuff built in but they also actually have one better ballistic skill so my goal with them was essentially the same as this the skink skirmishers i figured having three units of 10 would mean that i could cover the parts of the board that i wanted to and i'd be able to get them to the the relevant targets that i needed and then finally rounding out the list is two stegodons so for the stegodons i decided to go with giant blowpipes as i have played against dan with the giant bows and they just they, they just don't do anything because it, it's one shot at strength five and ap2 so it's kind of like a bolt thrower but it doesn't pierce through ranks or anything like that uh, it does do g3 wounds so it is good for monsters and stuff but i figured i'd rather have the giant blowpipes as well as the javelins on the from the crew that's on there just for again uh, the weight of attacks for everything being poisoned yeah so that is the breakdown of my list and kind of what i was thinking with regards to why i chose what i did so be sure to check out the battle reports of my actual games to see how the lizardmen fared thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys around in the next video